from I Am Interchange. This is the Hatch Podcast Series. As young Tanzanians, in particular, struggle to define their way in the world, questions arise about the true nature of opportunity and what to do when there is a lack. Does the mere existence of options suffice? Amidst political and social landscapes intent on the misleading adage to pull yourself up by your bootstraps, it seems the individual is to blame for failing to carpe their diem. But the process of how we become what we become, the choices and experiences that lead us from point A to Z, beginning to end, is far more complicated than adages can convey. Opportunity resides in place as much as presence. Here at the African Regenerative Futures Summit in Zanzibar, Tanzania, I host Veronica Likunama, Dr. Stephanie Dungu, and Victor Muhagachi as we examine the nature of opportunity in a tiny country on the cusp of technological, social, and political evolution. Welcome everybody, this is the Hatch Podcast Series. We are in Zanzibar, Tanzania with Stephanie, Victor, and Veronica. Hey. What's happening, you three? Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. It's amazing. My pleasure. We're at the African Regenerative Futures Summit Mm -hmm. with Threefold. What's your relationship to this area? So for me specifically, my sister lives here actually, but we haven't seen each other for like three years. And... The one thing that I could say, what's my relationship with Zanzibar? It's every time I think about it, I just think it's more like a, a second home for me because I just have like the most best memories in Zanzibar with uh, my nephews and nieces. And I once did work here for six months. It was actually one of the most best work experience. People are really kind and everyone is actually so generous and I think it's because of that you feel welcomed, you feel just like a part of something, you know, because I remember when, when I was working for an industry, actually Bakresa, back in the day when he his uh, milk industry was still here. So sometimes we'll go with a bus, but then if you miss a bus, it's hard because Fumba Town is very far. But then there are generous people on the way who would stop by, hey, do you need a ride? Where are you going, Fumba Town? Oh, we're going the same way. So I was like, wow, this is... This is something that you do not experience in Dar because it's a huge city, you know, yeah. and it's a lot of people. So people cannot, actually not everybody can do that. So, yeah, yeah for me, it's just really like the family to me. It's like a second home. Yeah. Mm. I actually, I'm, I have no relation here, but mm-hmm. it's one of these things. Just being Tanzanian, um, mm-hmm. you know, Tanzan, we... If you're in the mainland, you forget that we have an island. Oh, yeah. There's this whole other aspect of Tanzania that mm-hmm. brings it together, you know. So just like experiencing that and being part of it is something I want to like enjoy more and to look, mm-hmm. have that opportunity to say like I, I'm I'm part of a coast and mainland. Exactly. Like, it's a privilege. Like, you know? Yeah. And um, not only come for vacation, just being able to come to Zanzibar to take the like, it's a whole... It's like a, it's like a, not a country per se, but like a city on the rise. So a lot of things is like you're walking in time and present. So I would say that nostalgic ef- effect is what I, mm-hmm. I really feel it every time I, I come to Zanzibar, you know? Yeah. So for me, I'm from Kenya and Zanzibar and Tanzania, they're part of the East African community. Mm-hmm. So I think that's how I relate to Zanzibar. And, um, I would say that my relationship with the place is, slowly growing roots because I have met through threefold. I've met lots of different people doing amazing things from all parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been an incredible experience. On Monday, I'll be meeting someone. I'll talk about this later. Um, So she's in health as well. She's um, the director of Wajamama, which is also an initiative like mine um, that helps women to access cancer screening services so it's it's really amazing to meet other people who have um a similar cause to yours yeah stephanie yeah let's lean into that a little more i'm curious what projects brought you to this summit and yours you gave your presentation yesterday around uh women and health will you take me into that one more time Okay. Um, so the first summit uh, was in July um, by Threefold, Africa Regenerative Cities, um, Volume 1. 
um, where I did kind of like a similar presentation on the work we've been doing. I am a medical doctor uh, by profession in, based in Kenya, and I am a general practitioner. So when I was doing my internship, I noticed that many people, especially Kenyan women, they would really seek me out a lot, and they, they were comfortable speaking to me about whatever issue they were facing. And that's when I decided I would dedicate like a, a big part of my life to helping them get better and equitable healthcare. And that's how I started um, Naledi Health, which is um, an empowering platform for these women to gain education about breast cancer and also to seek those services that are life-saving. How do you transition from like being a medical profession to mm-hmm. now thinking about it beyond being just a, it's more of an organization to mm-hmm. some extent? How did you make that transition? Oh, yeah. I think I would say my hand was forced because um, right now in Kenya, it's quite difficult as a medical doctor to actually get a job after you finish your medical school because they're flooded in the market. So I had to think on my feet because I have a valuable skill and I can't let it go to waste. So I decided I'd just start with volunteering. Um, so I'd dedicate my services to helping the ones who are most in need. And then from there, I can slowly build a base through networking and through meeting like-minded people in the industry. Um, that's that's how it slowly evolved into what I have now, which is that organization. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amazing. How about you two? What brought you here? Oh, so for me, it's uh, the project that actually brought me here is the community. So I'm, I'm working with a community and I usually say I'm a product of a community because in uni, I actually didn't study anything about technology at all. And right after I finished, I began a boot camp. That's why we actually met with Justin. Uh, my partner, we also do the same thing. We've been doing that since 2018, late 2018. So uh, I would say the community like raised me and... Back in the day, I really didn't know anything about nothing because all the things that I know now, all the concepts that I had learned, uh, it was a, it was because of this community. So the one thing I remember is, was that it was really hard to begin with because the boot camp in the boot camp, some people were actually had been in technology for quite a long time, and then there is me who actually have no idea whatsoever. So, and I remember my very first GitHub comment was the very funniest thing. Ever, but my mentor was really impressed because some people who know about these things didn't commit anything, and then there is me who doesn't know anything. Just had this one crazy commit. Uh, I remember what I did send to GitHub it was a file, an actual like a PDF. I remember that's what I did. So I I don't know how I don't even remember how I did it, but I did that. So we had the boot camps, and right after the boot camps. Actually, it's a very long story in it. I don't think if I can like dive in it, but right around twenty twenty one, I had my first job actually as an actual community manager because before I was volunteering in communities, I remember my very first community event to volunteer to organize it was uh, Andela community event, and that day we were having some sort of competitions. And then my second one was a GDG event in 2018. Then I was, we also did one in 2019. I also helped organize and I've been organizing ever since. And then in 2022, last year, October, I met uh, Africa Stalking. That's when we met and we had, I think that was, that was one of the very first hackathons we have done in Dar es Salaam. I particularly in it. And we, I think my, my team, actually me, Justin and other friends, we won. And we saw this as an opportunity because we do not get like actual hands-on experience on how to build things, you know, especially from big companies. And Africa's talking uh, has, was and has been willing enough to offer their APIs for us to play around and, you know, build stuff. So we volunteered to lead on the community ever since, and our community has grown si- since then because it was just a few of us, but now we have almost 300 people, and we have always been wondering what else can we do, what value can we add to the community because right after we finish hackathons, it's, that's just it. And people come up to me like V, well, my friends call me V, actually. V, um, 
what else? I mean, is there jobs maybe or internships? So I have this one, two, three, four, five, six, six skills. What else can I do? So through through threefold, I met uh, actually really good people, uh, people who are actually willing to find ways to help us with internship, to help us with have more hackathons that will actually um, introduce these developers to what's really going out there. And probably through that, I believe we can have like real impact now in people's lives because I'm back at university now and. I know what I want to study and how I want to study it. But the problem is I have my personal curriculum and then there is a university curriculum, which they're two different things. And some people would ask me why I do it, but there are some personal reasons to why I have to do it in a way. But uh, we are also working to change that because last year, no, yes, it's this year early March, we did partner with one of the universities. It's actually DIT, Dar es Salaam Institute of Technology. We partnered with them. So they they are willing to actually help us conduct these events and encourage more students to actually uh, take part and have this hands on experience in technology and not just, you know, be afraid of because I know people who have, who have bachelor degrees in computer science, but then they ask you, they say, okay, um, we do not have jobs. I mean, what is there? What else can we do? But then I know out there there are plenty of opportunities. I see online remote jobs and people do not know about remote jobs. Some people do not know about remote internships. So you see a person, I actually know a person. I used to know a guy who uh, graduated in 2016 and 20, I met him in 2020. He didn't have a job. So he was thinking about going back to school. So I, I really asked him if that was going to work for him and he said you know that's the only thing that i can do but then seeing people like that breaks my heart because what matters as uh one of the people presented today say it, it doesn't matter where you did study but what matters is your resume what can you do what can you showcase what can you build if it's a solution because nobody's going to hire you based on where you've started right so for me it's the community just I love the community and I just want to give back to help more people to just even take a step closer to what I know and believe that we can achieve as a community. I feel like I see like similarities in like um, mm -hmm. how things around us kind of get us into the spaces we're in at the moment, you know. Mm -hmm. um, even like um, for me, it was more like I'm very interested in like solving problems. I feel like um, sometimes... We're, we're exposed to a lot of things as a Tanzanian, you know, yeah. growing up. So, but then our culture is also split into two things mm -hmm. where we have the knowledge that we have, which is kind of considered not just per se primitive, but not like advanced enough to compete in other things. So when we have all this information, like in abundance, like we have in 2023, and um, it, it raises this need because... You want to like do all these things that you want, but then there's no opportunities around you. So I think that need to solve these problems was kind of like, for me at least, inspired me to like get in the tech space um, mm -hmm. with some friends of mine that I met, you know, where the, the kids were so like, you know, smartphones and like how mm -hmm. can it, like it changed our lives from mm -hmm. like the generation before us. So it's just a no brainer we're in like Zanzibar at this summit because that's, those seeds were planted as we were coming up, you know. Mm -hmm. But then there's there's this lack of infrastructure to help us exercise these ideas. So finding people like V and creating these dev communities and you find these small hubs that are so separated, but there's no ecosystem. Yeah, true. So what we're trying to do, like even being here and participating, I'm a product of being invited to small groups and slowly mm -hmm. coming into like an ecosystem that is still so young, but the the potential is so much because everything around us is under construction yeah. as, a, as a city, as a culture, as a country, you know, we're in the economy that's moving to a higher state. So we just want to participate, you know, and find opportunities. That's why we're here. And I'm excited for all the things that, you know, all the people we're talking about that the future can bring, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think it could be like the number one reason mm -hmm. I am in Zanzibar at the moment. True, true. I mean, we are actually, we are actually thinking of a way to bring together, um, the community, as you said, it's really scattered. Mm -hmm. So we're actually thinking to, uh, to bring together um, like the community in general as one because uh, last sat no last yes it's last Saturday we had um, one of the big tech events GDG, 
Google developer, there are some developer groups and it's like 200 people showed up. And sometimes we have events, then you might just find like 50. It's only 50 people who are coming up. And some people do not know about these events, but then they, um, some, some people would follow me and ask me, um, do you maybe know of any events or any <laughs> developer groups? And I'm like, we, we have plenty. Like I'm in almost like six or five, you know, and when you try and when we try to like bring all these people together and just create one, sometimes it, en- it ends up themselves just separating because we have students, we have people who are developed, then we have people in cybersecurity, we have people in people who are just uh, in blockchain, people who are in Web3. So it's it's a lot, it's a big thing, but then we're just taking it one day at a time. But yeah. this dream of us wanting, especially after Andela stopped their program to conduct Andela Dev, Dev it, it was... I mean, it was devastating for some people because they were actually looking forward to have another one for the next year. And I and my friends were just, you know, like thinking about it, like what what, can, what else can we do for the community? I mean, we were lucky enough, you know, to have this. But then some people who want this thing cannot have it really. And when you tell someone about Andela, they're like, oh, do they still have it? And you're like, no, they don't. It's for Some people, it's really heartbreaking because we are looking... For most people in tech, we're looking beyond school. We're not just looking in school. We're actually looking beyond school. We're mm. looking and searching for skills, you know, and the knowledge, how to put the knowledge that we, we have in action because we learn very little about technology in school. Yeah. You know, it's really, it's very tiny. It's not as much as we should. But it's, then, mm. it's, uh, it's not, it's, I think, I, I hate to say it's by design because it's, mm. um, it's a little bit is, you know. We're kind of like... I don't know, I feel like I'm going to get too deep. <laughs> but like, there's this, this, I don't know if it's the same in Kenya. Mm-hmm. I was, um, you can see there's a language barrier in how we learn mm-hmm. in school. So you have your primary education, just the name itself, primary. primary. This is the foundation of my, like, you know, yeah. my education, information, and everything I learned. Mm-hmm. And I reach, for in Tanzania, seven years, and then we switch mm-hmm. to secondary, and everything is in English. So you can imagine wow. I spend majority of my life my my like childhood learning yeah. everything in one language mm-hmm. the foundation and then i'm going to secondary school it's a whole different language mm-hmm. so you mm-hmm. you have people educated by memorizing and learning things mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i remember um, this is this actually happened to me i was uh, doing my chemistry exam in mm-hmm. uh, my last year my form six mm-hmm. um but then it was in a different country but okay. I had learned the same experiments in Form 2 here in Tanzania. Oh, yeah. I memorized everything. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to touch any of the apparatus because I could, I could do the, the questions without even mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. doing the actual experiment. Yeah, yeah. And I remember like just that experience to me was like, everyone around me was like, how can you like know this? Yeah. It was like, we memorize. Yeah, like, we, you yeah, know? yeah, we do. That's really yeah. sad. <laughs> you know? But you can see this in everything that we do now mm-hmm. like now coming to tech like you have people who have these ideas yeah. they don't know how to kind of translate them into mm-hmm. like practical things yeah. so how do we structure an education system that does not it's not catered on performance and mm-hmm. having this degree so you can get a job mm-hmm. into more like problem solving approach you know yeah. and um there needs to be a confidence in like our education system and i know it's like if you really like we're a, major- a minority of the whole country mm-hmm. you know so i i feel like these things kind of slow us down a bit but at the same time we live in a world with so much opportunity so yeah. having this small community is like a different way of learning like, true plus very the true. internet you know trying this practical like people doing startups that are that didn't have to go to, to school like have degrees mm-hmm. and we're seeing them like more examples of those will kind of like really find the approach of learning you know Mm -hmm. so i'm like excited for the future but at the same time i'm also like wondering if um are we putting enough effort into like even with this what i like about the spirit of the people at threefold from the first time i was here it was like Mm -hmm. there's this need to share you know yeah because a lot of things are gatekept i don't know if it's the same in kenya i'm curious to to know uh, the structure of because I, I feel like a lot of people in Kenya participate because of, a lot of people speak English and a lot of people in tech in Kenya yeah the Kenyan tech Could, community yeah. it's oh it's wild vibrant. and huge yes um, so for Kenya it's a bit easier because mm-hmm. um, right from primary school you're taught in English and both English and Swahili so mm-hmm. it's kind of like a breeze but I understand um, we have some 
some things in common with Tanzania apart from teaching people how to like have those um programming skills at from an early age and coding there's also that need to invest in entrepreneurial skills mm-hmm. for young people from a young age and that's something i feel that's lacking i'm mm-hmm. um, teaching people how to make money from a young age and having the right kind of mindset when it comes to money because i was just having a discussion with one of my friends here at threefold mm-hmm. she was telling me how she grew up in a humble background mm-hmm. so her parents always told her about how having a lot of money is not good mm-hmm. and you should be humble you shouldn't splurge and she grew up with that kind of constrained mindset such that even when she wants to make her own money it's not it, it's it's kind mm-hmm. of difficult for her so it kind of plays a role um, when it comes to gender equality and gender roles where the man um is the one who provides and the woman is just waits they to provide yes. the Yes. So there's there are a lot of gaps that I think and there are also opportunities as well that we should explore. Yeah. I I think also uh, when it comes to uh, the entrepreneur mindset and how to manage money I think it's really I'm not sure if it's a culture thing in East Africa or it's more of um well, I don't want to sound biased but I have friends who are Indian living in Tanzania, right? Mm-hmm. That since a very very young age they taught how to manage money and how to make it mm-hmm. right and they have the most entrepreneurial mindset yes. those people i ha- i know them and some of them are in tech they are doing amazing stuff mm-hmm. but i would say also um and i talked i think i spoke to one like one month ago what i told him is that what i believe and what i've seen with the jews these people share i might not be injured right but If you know that I'm I mean there is an opportunity somewhere you don't have to wait for me to come around and tell you like hey I'm looking for one two three four five six right but if you consider me a friend you should be able to like hey just share. there is one two three four mm-hmm. and that's that's because that, that's one of the things we are lacking and because we have friends from different nations he ain't as near we live with them and I know people who also have friends who are arabic and the indians but because they have same ethnic group they share the same things and mm. it's easy for them to share rather yeah, than share true. with me which if you look at it I'm like okay so what type of friendship is this if you can just but some people also share with you know other people with other things too but i think knowledge this type of knowledge maybe um we now should find a way to give it back to young people and other people or other people younger than us because yeah. it's really important yeah. I just wanted to explore the opportunities that you saw mm-hmm. a little bit more stuff and you brought it up. Go ahead and finish your thought Victor, but yeah, nah. let's let's talk about the opportunities yeah. in the region. Yeah, I was actually going to go to say something about opportunities. Like you see we have all this knowledge, but if we don't have if we don't create opportunities, oh. it's actually dangerous to give people a lot of knowledge without a place to exercise, or, Execute. you know? Mm. And I see this a lot in Dar es Salaam. I see it a lot in Tanzania there's a lot of information now and access and the reason people don't participate or get keep information is because there's little opportunities so it's like if I know this information I need to get keep it because if a lot of people know there's very few opportunities around so yeah uh just to kind of move the conversation forward I think the opportun- we need to create um in order for have an abundance mindset there mm-hmm. needs to be like a pipeline for like ideas to execution to a way to grow it and scale it right so if we can create that channel it's easy for people now to find ways to kind of know okay i am because i have a passion i have a skill set i need to go to the market so we are, like i said we are under construction so the opportunity should be the problems that we have like how do are we solving these problems are we allocating resources to these problems to be solved you know and i think that's what needs to be created at the moment as much as information has been like advocated open source is out here but if you give me tools and uh, i don't know where to use them i'm going to get frustrated and actually be resentful uh, you know and that's how we have corrupt leaders and we have corrupt cuz they're limited in the thinking capacity you know, in so many ways So when it comes to opportunities they do exist. Mm-hmm. Um but as much as we need to share with people within the community mm-hmm. as individuals I feel like we also need to be aggressive enough to mm-hmm. seek out those opportunities because they are there. They are there. I'll give an example. So I usually spend I think an hour to a day 
on this website. It's called Opportunities for Africans. Me too. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so they always post like whenever there's a grant or there's a leadership scholarship opportunity, they always post those mm-hmm. things. So I usually spend my time combing out like where do I fit. I'm assessing the criteria for each uh, program. Mm-hmm. And it's through this I've gotten two opportunities. Um, from One from the Cornell University, I think it's in the United States. Mm-hmm. They were teaching us leadership program, especially for women. And it's free, totally free. Um, there's another one um, I did by the Young Women in Leadership um, Accelerator Program by Nigerians. So it's all about how badly do you want to succeed and to also contribute to the community. And apart from that, of course, we also recognize um, companies like Threefold and also organizations like foundations, Bill Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, MasterCard Foundation. They give free scholarships and accelerator programs. But I think people need to know more about these things because they're there, but they just don't know. So true. There's like um, there's like there's like a gap of information, and also you gotta understand a lot of people don't have access to these things. Um, so we have to like do things like twice as hard. You have to educate and then implement. You know, yeah. you can't just implement without. You know, say, for example, a good thing is like we lack in management in in all our infrastructure problems. The biggest problem is management. Mm-hmm. And because we're given a lot of things as grants or opportunities are yeah. given to us by not us creating them, yes. the longevity of the, is you, the lifespan of law it is very little yeah. and there's no sustainability. Um, for me, what I would say is that um, we do have opportunities, plenty of them, yeah? Mm-hmm. But also, um, we need to start thinking in a uh, a little bit of a different approach because um, the way how development looks or should look, if I have to say, maybe in Tanzania or in Africa, it's not the same way how development will look right now in New York yeah. or USA. So we cannot say, um, I mean, I, I'm not sure sometimes when we say we do not have opportunities, if we are looking at the opportunities that are available in US and they're not available in Africa. But then we have problems, we have things that if we decide, okay, so we are going to work on this, that's a great opportunity. There are a lot of things. There are opportunities that some people, I mean, our Western Western brothers and sisters see in Africa and we do not. And then they come and implement those. And then we're like, oh, so there is an opportunity. But then it's the same things that we need to develop every day. Because you, So I have a question. So yep. you, do you think we have enough resources to know our opportunities? Uh we start with education. That's why we mm-hmm. say we need to educate ourselves. We need to, and and I go with uh, Stephanie's point, we need to be hungry. Because um, yeah. with the little knowledge we have, I believe with the little knowledge that we have, there's so much we can do first, yeah. right? Before getting this vast amount of, of knowledge. Because I did study food science and technology. And I can tell you there are plenty of opportunities in food science and technology. It's just that it's not that of a passion for me. But then there are vast of opportunities because if you look at agriculture, mm. there are so many things we could do with agriculture, and we do not say we do not say we do not need to say that uh, for us to develop in agriculture we actually maybe need uh, an engineered manure or an engineered seed. No, we have our soil is amazing. Our soil has so much nutrients. There are some things they just grow and we eat them. There are some vegetables we actually do not need uh, manure. We do not need anything from store bought to plant we do not need seeds the seeds just grow like in chicha chicha yeah, grows yeah. everywhere it's very nutritious it grows anywhere everywhere almost everywhere you go you find it so every time i look at things i'm like okay so we need to start thinking deep also we need, also need to start thinking differently yeah. we do not have to think of development has to be build, big buildings development has to be big bridges no development can be planting more trees Development can be, um, let's start like permaculture, you yeah. know, let's uh, use what we have to treat the soil. I mean, our soil is dying. We cannot build anything without manure. So let's think of a way that we could treat a soil, the soil naturally, like the way we used to. We never used to manure back in the days. You know, on that point of mm-hmm. um, simply in the agri and soil, like mm-hmm. in development, mm-hmm. it's Human capital development is very un- not looked at in Tanzania. Mm-hmm. We just had the Human Capital Summit like this year for the first time, mm-hmm. and um, 
the great ideas we discussed, you know, but then the practicality of a lot of these things, like because we don't have good leadership as well. So mm-hmm. this kind of ties into like um, how much of the state that we're in. Mm-hmm. If we, because like, you see, there's this myth that African leaders uh, they're corrupt and they yeah. use a lot of propaganda. Imagine if that same energy was used in a positive light. So there's there's a need for good leadership that kind of thinks about all these things in a holistic approach, yeah. uh, from like local government all the way to like you know the central, and then you allocate resources in in a way to boost things mm-hmm. instead of right now it's 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 investing in big ideas that then the people are excluded from you know so. I, I don't know. I'm 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 very passionate about education, yeah. but I think the type of education that we have right now it's competitive and it's extractive. It's not it's not circulating or regenerative in a mm-hmm. way that uh, I find opportunities. More like what can I do to reap and the most benefit and profit mm-hmm. and the profit Just at the, at the you know, top, you know. And that profit is it's at a really high cost, you know. That it's um it's we are trying to compete. I like how you put it. Like the, I, our idea of development is westernizing. Yeah, I mean, it shouldn't be that way. Yeah, I mean, it, sh- it really shouldn't be that way because I think I'm not sure if it's by design that we have uh, more resources when it comes to land, agriculture, water. We have that. That's given, no matter what, right? So if we could find a way to say. Um, as a country, think of a way as a country, how can we help the world in general uh, maybe solve these climate change problems? We have right now because of technology. So there are a lot of things that we have. We have nicest furniture, really. We have people doing constructions of big buildings and stuff. But then if we can think of a way to still do uh, nice interior designs without cutting more trees, but planting them. Uh, utilizing what we have to build homes that are more size sustainable for the for the environment, mm-hmm. I think I think that would bring a certain type of development, and maybe we would be a source of somehow the world and climate change to um Can I, to, to just reduce. Yeah, sure. Can I say something more radical? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think um, we need to we need to give. We don't have ownership of our land as Africans because of marketing and good publish and good like really good branding of like you find a lot of young people in our even our families we're growing up to live where we are like oh, to put yeah. maisha mazuri to the same thing mm-hmm. it's like we want to get a better life and move out where we are that's yeah, the yeah, yeah. message we're taught as kids yes. go to school go study so you can get out mm-hmm. get out of poverty what is poverty is my environment yeah so if you if you see that how detriment that is a very detrimental way of thinking because mm-hmm. I'm thinking uh, I'm I'm brought up and we're bringing up children to think they're not where where they are is bad it's wrong it, it is it so yeah. there's no this mindset of fixing it's more like getting out so mm-hmm. we have a get out mindset and I think it's really dangerous for a society to live like that that you can do any old type of education but if you don't give people ownership they will not take care of things no, around them yeah. so i think the number one thing africa should do is like give its people the ability to feel like hey i'm i'm happy where i am mm-hmm. and i can improve it in my own way you know the sovereignty yes. we're talking about yeah. but in a way that encourages creating and building and the opportunities the pipeline like i don't know why we invest in like really ridiculous things <laughs> That I really know. It. Yeah, it's it's because we're trying to be like first world countries. True. Because we're in it's 2023. You can True. tell. You can't tell. Uh, like if I was the president, if you tell me we need roads, uh, I'll be like, yeah. So do I prioritize that, or mm-hmm. do I like um, pr- put that in the resources into building people can build roads for their own for themselves? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you need that a, that a mixture of approach. Let's say if we're gonna build. 10 kilometers or 1,000 kilometers of, of tarmac road, let's say 10% of that or 50% of that should be built by us. Like, no, we have the knowledge. We have the infrastructure to do it, the machinery, and every, everything, you know. If we're going to build hospitals or healthcare system, like 30% of all this aid we get should, should come into educating us to build it ourselves. Mm-hmm. Well, right now, it's the opposite. We just become employees or workers and middlemen. So a lot of African... Uh, I would say great leaders or business people are middlemen. They're not extractors. They're not creators. They're not mm-hmm. manufacturers. You know, so 
that radical approach is what is really really needed yeah, I, i mean i agree with you totally I mean, we we need to start thinking of using our uniqueness of our uniqueness of us as a continent mm. and how to just build it in the unique way that it is we do not have to be like exactly like the worst in world yeah we do not have to be like dubai or shanghai but we can bring a uh, development uh, technology to our people and still be um, productive yeah. still be green still be an environment that sustainable an environment that anybody would want to stay in right even even better and it all begins with selfless leadership and governance yeah because. and and also we also really need to change this thing at a family level this thing that we were told as a child that study hard mm-hmm. working abroad pays off yeah. study hard uh you need to travel traveling is good right but just the concept that if we stay here we're yeah. not going we'll to get development we we'll yeah. die poor it's detriment on its yeah. own yeah it needs to come from us like you mm-hmm. know um Yeah, I feel like you you have you want to say something? Yeah. Yeah, we've got uh maybe like 15 minutes left, so I just want to make sure we can get through it all. Okay, yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> no. Cuz this this kind of like this fascinating area cuz yeah, yeah, it uh, is. I'm like uh I just want to say something cuz I'm going to be a rec- I did a lot of research on this. It's mm-hmm. it cost a million dollars to build one kilometer of tarmac road. Oh yeah. A million dollars. You can look it up. It's Yeah. A million point 2 maybe. Now we have in dollars in dollars oh. now we have a, a way that's a thousand kilometers so you can imagine mm-hmm. this is loan oh, we're giving from IFM the World Bank but none of that money you can't point out to any road that was built by us if we can invest that amount of money we should invest at least not less than 10 but 20% of it yeah. to people to us and industries to do it ourselves so that investment that goes into the country it's educating people because we are paying it we mm-hmm. are paying it we are you yeah. know or we are going to eventually so if we can in the process teach our people and like barabara za mitaani i'm speaking so here in the mix of all the mm-hmm. in the roads in our neighborhoods can be yeah. built by us by yeah. local like engineers and vendors mm-hmm. that from here creating job opportunities but at the same time we can take care of these roads because it's like mm-hmm. we built them it's different than like oh uh, we brought your roads mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. <laughs> this no, is no, our no, roads no, no, no. <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. we built them you know yeah. to add on top of that i mean there's a word I'm, I'm looking for and I and I've forgotten but an ev- the most evidential thing that we should look at is kids when we're young we have so much talent we do not have most of most of Tanzanian families I don't know in Kenya but most of Tanzanian families we do not have like a privilege to have these Barbie dolls I've not seen a Barbie doll since when I was I mean since until I was um maybe for 10 an actual baby doll and I saw it from someone right mm-hmm. but most of our families do not have this privilege but we build stuff we build stuff we build all our toys i remember we build all our toys we used to have clay we built yeah. clay we built stuff and burn them and then create little houses it was fascinating so we have that in us but then you grow up you're told go to this school. go to school this is not good get out of here you see so that that's going away You I mean, the creative we side. are yeah. instead of nurturing it, we are killing it. But imagine if we were told since we're children, like, okay, you build your own toy. Can you uh, imagine building something else, or do this, or do that? And we have our own educational system that you know nurture that from family level, then school, then all the way to universities. I think our country, continent, even the world would be different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this will happen once we have excess income in the household. Because I think we are, we don't have the luxury to think like that. Because most of our parents are like in a hurry, be like the opportunities are here. I want all my children to have this pipeline. So once we solve this basic universal income for a normal household in Tanzania, that is not comparable. Because it's so dangerous with our devices. We're comparing living standards to a completely different culture. Yeah. So. And I also I'll, I'll give a reference, um, especially in Kenyan families. So. If you want to become a DJ or a dancer or just anything to do with the arts, it's not considered like a serious career, mm-hmm. but the most envied are like doctors, pilots and whatnot. So we need to celebrate also the impact of art in communities as well, mm-hmm. um, in, in con- contributing to innovation and things like that. Yeah. yeah. So. And also just to add on that, 
the glorification of this better job should be on problem solving, not in having True. them. Because yeah. most of our doctors or engineers and lawyers, it's the they're, title. they're just titles. They mm-hmm. don't. I've never seen any lawyers put a policy up for it, you know. I've never seen any doctors like form a coalition and say, hey. And then we have shitty services. You know, yeah. like I went really? to, 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 I wrote a letter to the hospital of Benjamin Kappa in Dar es Salaam, mm-hmm. in the Doma. Because my grandma was there and wow. the canteen, the place you wash your hands was so dirty. And it's like, how you guys work Exactly. Here? No, you imagine know? a person is sick, then you go there. You get even more sick, you know. Yeah. I remember this one time we went to a hospital. My mom told me, do not sit down. This place is dirty. I'm like, wow. It's a hospital where, where people are sick. And she's like, yes, a lot of people are sick, but then it's not clean enough. You can get contaminated, you know. So don't touch stuff. But then... Yeah, they have, I mean, if we have resources maybe to sanitize once in a while, you know, it, it could be an environment where even a person who is sick would feel, you know, just good to be there, you know. Who's resisting you? I wouldn't say exactly resisting me, but some somehow sometimes just like a little bit holding me back. Sometimes I think of it as more of myself because I have so much information. Like so much information, and I know what I want to do. But then sometimes there is that thing, you know, like I'm not sure if, if I'm procrastinating about it, but or just do not see the way I see it. I'll I'll, I'll mention again, my friend Justin. Justin, uh, we spend a lot of time together, and he would tell me, "I see you can do this, V, right? Like the way I see what he can do." And I tell him there is one, two, three, four that you can do. And then in return, he tells me, you can do one, two, three, four. And I'm like, what? I can do that? And he's like, yes. It's funny how, and he always say, it's funny how I see potential in other people rather than I see in myself. That's what he says. And I always tell him it's funny also how I see potential in him <laughs> more than I see in myself. So maybe it's just, I don't know, maybe it's because of the hardships sometimes that we go through because... Uh, even, you know, my tech journey is not like it was all easy and stuff because I bought my first very own PC, uh, computer, uh, actually 2021 that I bought when I started working. But I, the way I learned tech and the people who actually know my story, I guess, I don't know if they're fascinated or find it funny, but the first time I had a PC, I was given, uh, by this old man, may he so rest in peace was volunteering with him and Wikipedia, you know, writing content in Wikipedia Swahili. So we're trying to grow our Wikipedia in Swahili. And I do volunteer. So I met that man there and he saw how passionate I was. And that's when he offered me his son's PC. So it was a very old PC. Had Windows 8, 2GB ROM, very slow. But then um, because I was so passionate about tech, I said, okay, what what is the latest uh, Windows OS system that I could use? It was Windows 10 and it never su- it wasn't supported by that PC. So I went to Ubuntu. Then I stayed with it for six months. It actually fell down one day. It broke the the window that flips. It was detached and the screen was divided in two. One side was black, one side was white. So I was using the side that was white all this time. Wow. And then there is this time it remained a quarter inch of the screen and I was still using it. Until um, I think there is another friend who had two PCs. I used hers, then it broke down, then used another PC. <laughs> uh, then they all broke down, so I, I had to find other means. Went a whole year without a PC, without a smartphone, so I had to start afresh. I worked multiple jobs to get me to the job that I I got back in 2021, and I worked all sorts of crazy jobs, really. But what I can say is that because of so much hard experiences that I've had, sometimes I forget that I have it in me to get me to where I am. And thank God, that because I pray and I have faith in God. I mean, sometimes without praying, it, it was so hard. It was really, really hard at some point. So if I didn't pray, I think I would have break. But I think my family, I think my friends, always really having my back, it's... I just really cannot thank them enough, but yeah, I can say sometimes not all the time or a hundred percent, but I think there is no anybody else that really is holding me back more than myself. Yeah, that's beautiful. Right? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I would say, I want to phrase it right, resources, because it's, what resistance means lack of resources because value is pegged into actual currency. Mm-hmm. Like money is 
still it's something that we really oh, need to get too. things mm-hmm. done. Mm-hmm. So um, I think if we could look at value differently, that the resistance will slow down uh, and the limitations won't be as, as they are prominent if we look at value differently. So that would be the number one. But then I use like my passion as the oil to reduce the resistance mm-hmm. and yeah, and apply more pressure until you know we move forward. Yeah. That would be the one. Yeah, um, I think I'll just echo what V said. So there's this high school in Kenya. Mm-hmm. It's a boys. It's a national boys high school. It's called Mangu. Their motto is Jishinde Ushinde. So that means conquer yourself mm-hmm. so that you may conquer the mm-hmm. world around mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. And I think that um, the certain thoughts and beliefs that individuals have that really slow down your progress and mm-hmm. you might not even know that um, sure. that's happening. Sure. So I think through regular inter- introspection, like really take time to examine your mental and emotional processes mm-hmm. and um, discover your own thought processes and mm-hmm. like just identify the gaps. And I think that's... Um, and also self improvement that's what um will help you to actually conquer because mm-hmm. as long as you have um a big dream this is by larry page i think he he's the google founder mm-hmm. one of the google mm-hmm. co-founders so he says that as long as you have the right team and a big dream you can achieve anything mm-hmm. so it's also ar- about the people you keep around you are they slowing you down oh, are yeah, they true enabling you to be better and to do better so mm-hmm. it's it's a mix of both it's yourself and those around you mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and money as well yes Sometimes. and money <laughs> it's a thing yes so our, ourselves and resources and money yeah those are good what brings you hope do not sound really corny or anything but the fact that i am here today really uh two weeks ago i i had no idea there was actually a three fault summit but yesterday i was actually reminiscing in my room i'm like wow i'm here with all these amazing people from all around the world and hearing all these great opportunities and i'm privileged enough to be here i'm like i don't even really sometimes i don't really know uh, how but i think i just have this one motto that really keeps me going like all the time is that I'm going to get there. Somehow, I'm going to get there. Whatever I'm thinking of, whatever I'm dreaming of, I'm going to get there. I don't know how. I don't have to figure it now, but I know I'm going to get there. So that's one of the things that really have gotten me to where I was in 2018 to where I am now because I had zero knowledge of tech, but then I was so persistent, really, really persistent, and I said, I'm going to get it. I know, come rain come whatever, I know I'm going to get it. I mean, and I know I'm going to get there. I remember I just had a flashback. Oh, yes, when, I was smiling. Yeah. <laughs> when I was, I think, seven years old, mm-hmm. I remember it was on a Monday afternoon. Oh, uh, wow. It was really hot. And I had, I had drawn a picture of a robot. And then I, the title was Fixing Things. It was a giant wow. room. I, I used to watch uh, Dexter's Lab and I really oh, nice enjoyed it. Yeah, so I, I made that drawing and then um, I think there was a teacher who came and she saw it and then she asked me, what are you fixing? And then I didn't have a response for that. Mm-hmm. But I think what gives me hope is problems. Mm-hmm. How mm-hmm. big is a problem? Is it big enough for someone to want to solve it? So I'll give an example for the work that I'm doing which is um, 90% of cervical cancer deaths occur in low- and middle-income countries. And it's mostly because of lack of screening. So that's a huge, huge problem. And I believe that there's a solution for that, and I can be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. For Australian um, hospitals, they usually vaccinate their boys as early as 9 years old, 9 to 14, 70% are vaccinated, which is not the case in Africa. Right now is when we're starting to vaccinate girls and um, the conversation is for, um, for vaccinating boys has, has just begun. So I believe that through that kind of scope of the problem, I can be part of the solution as well. Yeah. Man, this is what gives me hope. You see? <laughs> <laughs> this too? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I see. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm excited for the future. That's why mm. I think I used to, I, I asked myself this question like uh, recently and I was thinking, because I feel like I get up, I'm, I'm privileged to kind of like meet mm. people from different parts of the world. And yeah. that experience exposed me to see how cool we are. 
we Tanzanians, Africans, we're so cool because we're exposed to a lot of things at an early age from different cultures. And if we are taught to put it all together into a melting point and use it to our advantage, we can create a utopia that can not only influence the world, but show a different way of life, you know. Yeah. And I'm hopeful so we can build that narrative and not be sold by marketing and these big things mm -hmm. on what we should be. So I'm very hopeful that we will be the generation that does that. And if we can, the next one should, and the next one should have more and more and more resources to execute that dream. And, and yeah, it's yeah. more than hope. It's a reality I want to <laughs> mm -hmm. participate in, you know? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Can't wait for that future. And it's now. It's happening. It is happening, actually. It After is. After this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Yes. <laughs> I definitely agree. Definitely. Oh. You know, it's it's just fascinating, really, the amount of things that we can do. And there is a road, I think you know it, from airport mm -hmm. going backwards now, not going to, to town, going cool. to Google and Porto Pool, yeah. yeah. The last time I went there, it was back in 2006. I went there before coming to Zanzibar just like three days ago. It's so different. Mm -hmm. Back then, I feel like back then it was more beautiful than it is now because they're building the road. But then mm -hmm. I feel like the construction has been going on for <laughs> quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So it has become this catastrophe. Mm -hmm. But then the way I look at things, I'm like, okay, um, I just hope that we see that this is an opportunity to, to do better and be better because we have to have a, a way of thinking when they were talking, I mean, when they were presenting yesterday about permaculture, I was thinking of the way how we, when we construct roads, there are some mm -hmm. things that they stop, they, um, the way how they conduct things, the way how they pile up things, and then the, there is load brokerage, then there is floods and everything. Then if we start thinking, uh, whenever we plan anything, especially as big as a project as road construction, if we start thinking of it in a way that if I do this, what is going to be an outcome and really, um, how long should I do this and how can I do it? What impact will it give to people living around here? Because it's just crazy how everything is now. It rained three days ago, the whole week, and yeah. the places around there, it's all flooding. Really, it's all yeah. flooding. And the number one reason is actually that construction, because what they did is the, the road is now like a day. heap, one heap, and then all the areas around it is filled with water. So that's crazy, but then it's an opportunity when we look at it that there is so much to be done with our country. We do not have to have the same system as everybody else, but then I think there is hope yeah. that yeah. things will be better. Yeah. I I really want to hear about um, your work oh, yeah. with Chata Fisher <laughs> and oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Washika Dao. That and brings us to Tenyota. that. Yeah. yeah, that brings us to that. Do you have in like a minute? <laughs> oh, yeah, sure, we'll. Um, in a minute, how would I put all that together? We're finding a creative way to trap money circulation in our community, capital circulation, through human capital development, through creating a, um, digital means for people to access and manage their like initiatives, community wise, and now they think about value and money per se. So with Chetta Fisher, we're trying to really find public spaces. Uh, with Washika Dao, we're trying to help uh, so many small community initiatives to kind of like um, have a place to manage and control their funds and see growth and turn it from a community initiative to an investment pool that they can reap benefit out of, you know. And from Kamusi is using language as a tool to kind of like inspire change by translating these complex terms. Like because, blocks. yeah, language, I heard this talk, uh, term, language is technology of the human mind. Mm -hmm. It's like, which, which, you, if you can understand thing, the intention of it, the meaning comes naturally. Mm -hmm. um, and with uh, Nyota, is literally we're piloting a community currency in Dar es Salaam. We currently have twenty people trying to show them, hey, proof of personhood can be a reputation way for you to make an income and use it to buy small like items around you, so you can save your local currency for bigger things like taking your kids to school, you know, saving up for like your rent you know mm -hmm. if you can solve those like your food and small things you have more income to circulate so hopefully this could sum up and create that oh yeah it's really yeah. great did i do it in that minute that brings me hope <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, okay. yeah. this is the hatch podcast victor <laughs> stephanie veronica thanks so much for being here thank hey you. thank you so much man. thank you this has been an amazing experience really thank you yeah my pleasure awesome
We aren't all experiencing the world through the same set of lenses, from the same place of privilege, with the same understanding of what is possible. Though this may seem like an obvious redundancy, we have an unfortunate habit of insinuating that these variations are irrelevant when it comes to workplace success, financial security, and a host of other expectations regarding one's personal evolution. Placing blame for any shortcoming of person, position, or solvency squarely on the shoulders of the individual. But this is, perhaps, one of humankind's greatest fallacies. We are not islands, even if we live on them. As Likunama, Dungu, and Muhagachi agree, a lack of access to opportunities, even the most basic of such, like adequate education, is at the center of their distinct struggles to find their way from an idea and intention to fruition. And it's not for lack of resilience or resourcefulness, it's for lack of literal resources. Still, rather than accept that truth, they have each, in their own unique ways, chosen to define an equally powerful one. That none of these personal feats needs to be tackled alone. We are more powerful in numbers, and our ability to rise above our status and situation might be best enhanced by a like-minded cohort intent on doing the same. But this need for community, while crucial for Tanzanians and so many underserved and under-resourced places and populations around the world, is equally important for those that are flush with resources as well. What happens when diverse people join together in their efforts? When they see beyond differences to those ties that tether us all? When they cooperate to build something from nothing? When they look to one another to find solutions, develop resources, and create opportunities not just for themselves, but for those who will follow in their wake. We overthrow corrupt governments, we change policy, we evolve, we grow. Before I let you go, I wanna let you know that these last two episodes wouldn't have happened without Threefold and Hub Culture. Thank you so much for hosting me and to everyone on the crew. Hello, and I'll see you again down the road. Thank you. It seems now more than ever that we have found ourselves on the cusp of monumental worldwide change. Whether we consider the environment, politics, infrastructure, health, economics, or inequities across a broad swath of social constructs, the consensus is clear and urgent. All is not as it should be. The United Nations, a consortium of 193 member states from around the globe, agrees. In 2015, the UN unanimously adopted the 17 Sustainable Development Goals the SDGs. These goals call for urgent action and global partnership to secure peace and prosperity for people and the planet, now and into the future. In alignment with the SDGs, Hatch, a curated network of artists, activists, and entrepreneurs working together to accelerate positive global change, has partnered with IM Interchange to fuse adventure journalism with experiential design labs to develop innovative solutions to complex global challenges. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to the podcast. If you enjoy it, please subscribe or leave us a rating. This episode was produced by Yara Craner, Susan Carstensen, and me, Tate Chamberlain. A shout out to our media and production team, Jessica Byerly, Darko Sevilla, Raymond Ansodegi, Kevin Hilton, and Mark Groner. A special thanks to Yara Craner, Anya Bulis, Jared Silverman, Pete Strom, Aton Shapira, and Rachel Hicks. With so much gratitude to the Hatch supporters, Steelcase, the Kaufman Foundation, the Gwydion Fund, Envision Equality, the Hatch Volunteers, Board of Directors, Hatch Guardians, and the community who helped make this work and mission possible. To learn more about Hatch, visit hatchexperience.org. Building community could not happen without food. And with that, I'd like to thank Whistlepig Korean, Red Tractor Pizza, and Zocalo Coffee House. Do you have an issue that's riddled by gridlock in your community? Shoot me an email at tate at iaminterchange.org. That's tate at iaminterchange.org. Remember, share airtime and don't ruin dinner.